UDL in practice, main challenges and possibilities in Brazil, how the UDL lens can be applied in our context. Hi everyone, Luani here. Regarding the UDL, it was necessary to consider not only the individualism of the students but also activities that incorporated sensory, auditory and visual elements to make them accessible, accessible to as many students as possible. However, in the first years of, of elementary school where I'm currently teaching at public school in the municipality of Uberlandia, there is a literacy part which involves structured teaching using the phonics method. Therefore, it was necessary to find a ways to implement the UDL within the, lim the limits of this project. For literacy, I introduced Braille literacy and sign languages uh, alongside learning the Portuguese alphabet as shown in the video. In this video, we see Luhani in his classroom teaching the manual signs of letters. In front of a blackboard filled with Braille symbols. Additionally, we created letters using re recyclable uh, materials that could be talked and manipulated. The materials can be seen from follow. In this image, we see the letters cut out of recyclable material, thick cardboard. It was a unique experience and the students are trying to learn different forms of communication, which was essential for the students who are neurodivergent. The alphabet cards are displayed it in the classroom and for its letter learning in Portuguese, the Braille and sign language version are also taught as shown in the images. In this image, we see the wall of the room where, in addition to the map of the alphabet indicated by the hands, we see the tables of routines and letters with drawings for students who need images. The object is to ensure that learning is accessible to all students, even if they are blind or deaf and that they are supported alongside their peer. Now, let's move on to your UDL report, Raquel. Hi, Raquel here. The two experiences that I am going to comment on took place in a small private school, maintained by a NGO of which I am part. In a context where most private schools refuse to enroll children with disabilities or developmental disorders. So, we helped many families that were not received elsewhere because their children needed specialized care. However, it is necessary to point out that as the legislation requires that the service has no additional cost for the student's family. The schools that propose to provide the service in general have many difficulties in maintaining it, as it is even more expensive than the conventional service. 
when a private school representative is wanting to give explanation, which is hair, this is the topic they refer to. The fine is cheaper than the cost of the service. Making this part of the first experience that I want to share here. <laughs> I, want, I was invited to present the UDL as a proposal for action for the teachers of this school. Finding the translated guidelines on the CAS website was very important to us. All teachers were encountered by the proposal over time in their daily work in the classroom. However, there is a feeling of impediment binding due to the requirement to advance in the curriculum a did, to the difficult conditions that some teachers face working many shifts without much time for planning. Many people end up seeing a very severe change of paradigms in the traditional context where they already work. Not only because this includes having to fit one way of evaluating with another or split the same time with different ways of looking at the content, apply the curriculum, distribute the score, or even the physical difficult that it is sometimes to care for people with more severe disabilities or the need for more meticulous planning in view of the lack of time to do so but also goes through having a remuneration that is too low to be able to maintain only one teaching position. There are colleagues who work three shifts to survive. There is no time for activities outside the classroom. I am also a teacher in that school, in one of the areas of fundamental two if it's the name Brazilian to something like the more or less the middle school in the United States. And it is with these students that I am trying to insert the UDL logic, the UDL lens in the daily pedagogical application. Along with the guidelines, other learnings that I could have with CAST where I've been had the opportunity to learn so much in recent years, starting to speak a new language, just to access these informations. Thank you for existing cast. So I'm especially grateful to each member of the cast family who have served me with remarkable kindness and to for providing me access with the course UDL1, a framework for addressing learning variability, theory and practice. I'm grateful for all the sharing of knowledge, cast friends. Thank you. This is still a new experience, so something I only realized now was I the lack of photographic records. This is my next point to improve. <laughs> As I have little in the way of images of the experiences I have lived. So, what I present here is my look immersed in the various problems about my experiences. In search of a dream of seeing quality education offered to all people without distinction. This is my dream. From the first perspective that I brought to, the, to this conversation, the theme of educational policies versus practice, to which we're, we are submitted, made us think about some questions that we are now going to share here. And if you are there with pencil and paper to register, 
How about writing down a response for the questions? Hmm? The first question is, how do decisions about approaches in schools directly influence us in schools, in our works? And uh, I ask, try to reflect at a micro level first and before thinking about the macro level. And the second and last question is, are we enable our students to develop their potential? Hmm? Time to make you answer. <laughs> now, even before finishing this video, we want to invite you. Come, listen. Here, gathered at this symposium, we are a diverse group of individuals brought together through caste, all seeking to explore a more universal approach to learning and how it can be universalizing. Those of us preparing this presentation are Portuguese speakers. And how many beyond Brazilians are we connected to truth this shared language. And all of you who welcome us into your virtual space are English speakers, a language we are learning to better understand UDN. <laughs> so, daringly, we imagine the possibility of breaking national barriers with our languages. In this audacious vision, we have created two tools that can unite and connect us. A Padlet and a Google Slides presentation open for interaction, where teachers from around the world who can access these two languages that now bind us can share their UDL experiences. We invite you to join and share your own stories. Come on, look at these QR codes in the screen. They can show you, right? See you. <laughs>